Hello and welcome to another lesson of financial modeling brought to you by Wall Street Prep. Please check us out on the web at www.wallstreetprep.com uh, where you can also download this accretion dilution model that we're going to build together. Now, uh, accretion dilution model, accretion dilution analysis sounds complicated, but it's really pretty straightforward. It's also one of the core models investment banking analysts and associates have to build when analyzing an acquisition. Now, the purpose of this analysis is to assess the impact of an acquisition on the acquirer's expected future earnings per share. Let's get some terminology out of the way. An acquisition is accretive when the combined companies, uh, on a pro forma basis, the combined earnings per share, is greater than the acquirer's standalone basis. For example, Let's say we're going to analyze a uh, Google acquisition of Motorola Mobility. Now, Google is expected to earn $25 per share uh, on a standalone basis, okay, on a pre-acquisition basis. If it makes this acquisition and the combined company's uh, earnings per share is, say, $30, then that deal is accretive by $5. Google would earn $25. In EPS, if it did nothing, it earns 30 after it acquires Motorola. That's an accretive deal. Okay. An acquisition is dilutive if the opposite is determined. Okay. That uh, if, if Google makes this acquisition and their combined companies, uh, the, the, what we call pro forma earnings per share, is less than $25. And a deal is considered to break even uh, when there's virtually no impact to earnings per share. Unfortunately, as you're about to see, um, it's not as easy as just combining the two companies' net incomes together, uh, as there are many adjustments to be made. So we're going to uh, look at this by building this hypothetical accretion dilution model uh, for Google's acquisition of, of Motorola Mobility. Okay. Now again, the numbers and assumptions in this model are purely illustrative and not meant to be taken uh, as what actually happened. So we're going to assume it's January 1st, uh, 2013, and Google announces it will acquire a Motorola Mobility for $40 per share, and Motorola was trading at 25 prior to the announcement. So now we can go in and calculate the offer premium. Okay. It's a 60% premium to what Motorola was trading at prior to announcement. Of course, you must offer a premium typically to acquire control of a company in order to, in order to induce shareholders uh, to, to sell to you. 60% offer premium, and we can also calculate the total offer value. Motorola, uh, Google rather, is going to pay $40 per share for every share that Motorola has outstanding. They have 315 million shares outstanding. So this is a $12.6 billion offer value. Now broadly speaking, Acquirers can pay for their acquisition uh, either by issuing shares, of course by paying cash, or using some combination. Now for our model, we're going to assume that this acquisition was paid for 50% in stock and 50% in cash. Okay. And again, for this model, we're going to assume that that cash uh, is financed entirely by new Google debt. Of course, most companies uh, have to pay taxes, so we're going to assume a 40% tax rate. Okay. Now we can calculate how many acquirer shares are going to be issued in this transaction. We know the total offer for Motorola is $12.6 billion. And we know Google is going to issue shares at $750, its current share price. But only half of this transaction is going to be paid for with stock. So Google is going to issue 8.4 million new shares to help pay uh, for this acquisition. Now of course a company if it has a lot of cash sitting around on its uh, balance sheet it can use the cash, any excess cash it has to uh, pay uh, to acquire a target. For our purposes, we're going to assume all of this cash comes from debt. 
course, its total offer value of $12.6 billion, 50% uh, coming in cash, again, basically in, uh, all in debt. So Google must raise $6.3 billion in new debt. Of course, debt uh, has, a, has a finite life. We're going to assume uh, that the life of this debt is five years. It will, it will mature in five years. And you must pay interest on that debt. We're going to assume that Google would pay 5% on that new debt. Of course, interest expense will reduce pro forma net income and reduce pro forma earnings per share. Additionally, when a company borrows debt to finance an acquisition, the debt bankers are going to charge us some fees related to that borrowing. Okay? Now, these debt financing fees are capitalized and amortized over the life of the debt issuance. For our model, we're going to assume that debt uh, financing fees are $2 million dollars and those will be amortized over the life of the debt over five years. So we'll have an additional incremental uh, financing fee amortization expense of $400,000 every year. Now, one of the, the main rationales for doing an acquisition is to realize synergies. And synergies are, are most often realized in, in cost savings, okay? uh, eliminating overlapping infrastructure uh, and redundancies. Any forecasted cost savings from that acquisition will reduce expenses, uh, thereby increasing net income and increasing earnings per share. Also in an acquisition, targets assets like property, plant, and equipment and intangible assets are allowed to be written up to fair market value. Okay. So for our model, uh, again, these numbers are purely illustrative. Uh, the book value of assets like PP&E and intangible assets are $20 million. Because we're acquiring this company, we're allowed to go in and write up PP&E uh, to its fair market value. We're assuming that's $25 million. So we have an asset write-up of $5 million. Now, that write-up will, of course, need to be depreciated and amortized over time. So we're going to assume that those that, that write-up will uh, be amortized and depreciated over 10 years, uh, thereby increasing or uh, you know, incrementally adding an additional $500,000 to depreciation and amortization every year. Uh, finally, uh, any investment banking advisory fees, uh, any legal fees, any accounting fees, Will need to be expensed as incurred on the pro forma income statement. Okay, of course, the uh, more expenses will again reduce net income and reduce earnings per share. Okay. Now, please note this is a different treatment from the debt financing fees mentioned earlier. Okay. The debt financing fees mentioned earlier are capitalized to the balance sheet and amortized over the life of the debt. In this case, these advisory fees that we pay the uh, investment bankers. Uh, the lawyers and the accountants. Those are just expensed as incurred. That's what we're calling deal fees. And for the purposes of this analysis, we're going to assume those are five million dollars. Okay. Now that we have all of that out of the way, we're almost ready to begin uh, building our accretion dilution model. Uh, we're going to do that in the next lesson, so please stay tuned.